Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Breakthrough in the case of a teenage girl sexually assaulted by a relative in Hanover. Hurricane in a pandemic. We continue to look at preparedness for the season. And later in sports, reggae boys to play two friendlies on tour in Asia. I'm Anthony Logue and here are the details. We begin this afternoon with a developing story. The police have made a major breakthrough in the case involving a teenage girl who was sexually assaulted by a relative in Hanover. The male suspect, who is alleged to have carried out the act at the family home in the parish, is now in police custody. He was nabbed by the Hanover police this morning. At approximately 7.30 a.m., the male relative was intercepted on way to the Noel Home Clinic. Our intelligence department is very active, so we were able to get around to that information. The matter should be going before the court as soon as the person is properly charged. We go now to reactions of the changes to the COVID-19 measures which were announced in Parliament by the Prime Minister. As Shane Masters now reports, not all stakeholders are pleased. Prime Minister Andrew Holness dubbed it the recrafting of the COVID-19 measures. Measures he strongly defended in his presentation in the lower house Tuesday. But there are questions surrounding whether it encapsulates the plight of the marginalized in society. I have to accept that that's the decision of our leadership and so we... We, we work with what they with what they, they have said because that's how they perceive it from the, the health risk standpoint. That's what I would assume. But we are still maintaining, however, that what we are said in that release still stands. The thing needs some time to revisit it and look at the options and the ways to accomplish the same ends without it, all the negative repercussions. The only thing I was listening for, which we did not hear, was a, a little bigger number to the funerals. Because we were looking at the double standard with the memorial, and we not having a memorial. The revised measures include extended curfew hours on weekdays and Saturdays, and the reopening of beaches and rivers. The Medical Association of Jamaica, MAJ, however, has raised a concern. We are particularly concerned, though, about the reopening of the beaches and the rivers. We've had problems with enforcement and compliance with the stated regulations. And if you recall, our first surge, which I believe would have occurred around um, last year's independence activities, would have seen things like crowds at beaches and, you know, rivers and that kind of thing. So it's something that the authorities need to look at very closely. And it's rejoicing for the religious community who have had their doors shuttered and the number of members limited since last year. But now, an additional 20 members are slated to be in church this weekend. However, for Reverend Al Miller... For many places in business, it is according to the capacity that you can social distance. But we set a set figure for the, for the church, and therefore a church is able to handle... The churches that are larger, all churches are not the same. So therefore, if you have a 1,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet and 50 people in it, and yet you're going to many other both many business places, restaurants, etc., and it is according to the size of the building. He says it is even more disheartening as beaches and rivers, which are known for crowds, will be opened as of June 3. As for the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, there is discontent regarding the quarantine period for fully vaccinated international and local business operators. The association's president says there must be a level playing field. Because they quarantined for roughly three days while they wait for their test, while we were quarantined for 14 days. The prime minister has reduced that from 14 to 8 days. Step in the right direction, but we really, really believe she gave them the same treatment as other people coming into the country. Fully vaccinated, we do our test. So we have to do our test to get in. We can do our test on arrival also if we want. And within three days, the test is negative, we can go about our business. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. Despite criticisms, the government is pressing ahead with its cash incentive program for seniors who have received the COVID-19 vaccine. 
Mr. Holness said the program is necessary to tackle vaccine hesitancy among priority groups. The issue was raised in Parliament last evening following questions by the opposition. Vashon Brown has more. Jamaica recently received another shipment of vaccines through the COVAX facility. More doses are also expected in the coming months. But some people are still hesitant about taking the COVID-19 vaccine. It's why Southeast St. Anne MP Lisa Hanna raised this point in Parliament last evening. And how can we incentivize the population to take the vaccine? In other words, the vaccination blitz have worked, but it, it still doesn't strike me that, that it's enough. So what can we do? In the United States, California on Thursday became the latest state to announce huge cash prizes to incentivize vaccination against the coronavirus, offering $116.5 million in giveaways, many smaller payments, as well as a final drawing for 10 winners of $1.5 million each. Officials in Ohio have said a chance to win a $1 million prize has helped boost the state's COVID-19 vaccination rate by 45%. In New Jersey, residents 21 years and older can get a free beer after receiving their first dose. Here in Jamaica in March, the government announced a conditional cash transfer program for elderly Jamaicans who've taken the COVID-19 vaccine. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government will be pressing ahead with the program, which will see vaccinated people aged 60 and over receiving $10,000. The Minister of Finance announced in his budget presentation that we're going to do a care program that is a conditional cash transfer. That if you show your, you, you have taken your, your vaccine, you will get um, some support under the care program. And the, the Minister of Finance will say more about that. I mean, I've heard the criticisms about it, but conditional cash transfers are standard economic policy tools to get behavior change. And this is a behavior change that we need. As I said earlier, he again pointed out that 65 to 75 percent of the population must be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity. He notes that the government is already giving incentives indirectly, like reducing quarantine for vaccinated persons to eight days and exempting fully vaccinated seniors from stay-at-home orders. Meanwhile, opposition spokesperson and education Angela Brown-Burke wanted to know about teachers specifically. Just another um, question, suggestion. If we are targeting in any specific way our teachers in terms of the public education, the discussion around what their concerns are, so that we could see an increase in um, the take-up for the vaccine. Vashan Brown, TVJ News. It's time now for a break, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Continuing the news. 45 new cases of the COVID-19 virus were confirmed on Monday from 706 tests. The country's overall case count is now 48,639. The country's COVID-19 positivity rate now stands at 6.2%. The death toll is now 951. Two additional deaths were recorded. In the meantime, 156 persons are hospitalized with a respiratory illness. 15 are critically ill. There are 21,688 active cases. Eight months after two residents lost their lives following a landslide in Shooters Hill, Bull Bay, St. Andrew, relatives are still haunted by the fatal incident. Sandy Williams visited the area and now joins us live. Sandy. Thanks, Anthony. Well, when I visited the area on Monday, we met Rosemary Leachman. She is the sister of the deceased man. She lives a short distance away from where the incident took place. Despite the dangers, she is seeking help to expand her house where she lives with her children. Zinc and a toilet bowl. The only pieces left of the house which was once in this spot before the deadly landslide in 2020. The bodies of the occupants, Romeo Leachman and his daughter, were found buried in the mud. Although the area has been declared a no-build zone, the deceased man's sister, who lives nearby, is contemplating expanding her home, even though danger lurks. Because I don't have anywhere else to go. If I did have somewhere else to go, I would um, leave because I'm not that comfortable where I am. 
She says since the start of the hurricane season, she's been petrified. My body always shiver. I always fret. I feel fret. I just started to pray to God. Sometimes the rain fall. I said, God, you can't start the rain and do not make it fall in the night. And do if you make it fall, make it fall in the morning. Because I also do not have any light. The rain, she adds, is a constant reminder of the incident, even for her children. Well, we can see it in the small one. When the rain fall, you could hear him say, like, God, the rain I come up, come wash your uncle Romy again and cousin. Oh, so you could have, you can catch it up in him. Most of them said, then I won't go gone so long and him not come back. Well, the big one, you can see still, him not still come to saying that him uncle gone. And now she's seeking help. I only need a wall. If I could get a wall behind and try to fix the black holes, get a black holes. I, will, I think I will be more safer on my side. Following the flooding in Shooterzil last year, the government established the Integrated Task Force to review existing policies and legislation aimed at reducing the impact of climate change, such as flooding and landslides on communities. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Hurricane in a pandemic? The fear of the government with the official start of the hurricane season. Speaking at a hurricane preparedness press launch on Tuesday, local government minister Desmond McKenzie explained that shelters have already been retrofitted with COVID-19 isolation units. Kelisha Williams has that story. The outer bands of tropical storm Zeta left widespread despair and a devastation in its path in 2020. In fact, regular afternoon showers have left our streets like this. So imagine what a hurricane would do. And on top of that, the country is in the midst of a pandemic. Now that we're in the hurricane season, the government is taking things a step further. All our shelters are equipped with isolation areas so that persons, if uh, they come down with COVID, will be relocated to these shelters. There are 867 shelters island-wide. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie explained on Tuesday that almost all the shelters are ready. There have been challenges in the past, getting Jamaicans in low-lying and flood-prone areas to move to shelters during a disaster. To resolve this problem, Mr. McKenzie had this message. Work with us to ensure that if there is any event that the effects are very minimal because the actions of the Jamaican people, we continue to build in areas that are not designated for construction. And what that means is that when rain comes and there's a flooding, everything is lost and the consequences are great in other areas. That aside, he stated that the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management is intensifying efforts to provide relief support to all Jamaicans should there be a hurricane this season. But there's much more work to be done. The Prime Minister has given the mandate for us to commence a comprehensive mitigation program right across the island with the local authorities working closely with the National Works Agency to ensure that we do as much mitigation work as possible before we get deep into the hurricane season. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. And over in St. James, authorities say their systems have been activated for the start of the hurricane season. More in this report from Dwayne Anderson. Mayor of Montego Bay, Leroy Williams, says emergency personnel in the second city are ready for the start of the hurricane season. But how prepared is infrastructure in St. James, in particular the drains? Our news team took to the streets to look for ourselves. One of the drains we visited appeared to be in need of some repairs as part of the structure is damaged. That aside, the drains we saw were clean. The matter of drain cleaning was addressed by Mayor Williams. All the councillors are placed on alert. I mean, they are told that they are to ensure that the drains and gullies are clean so that we won't have 
um, excess flooding. Last year, we had an allocation of about 600,000 for drain cleaning, which was allocated to each councillor. I cannot say specifically at this time how much will be allocated, but I'm sure um, funding will be coming from the ministry to help in drain cleaning. Now, given the incidence of flooding in Montego Bay in the recent past, residents will have to take greater responsibility for their safety. As you move around the town at strategic location, we do have gauges, which is to tell the citizens, you know, what is the depth of the water so as to prevent anybody being washed away or anybody from um, drowning. Over 60 facilities have been approved as shelters in St. James for the 2021 hurricane season. It is the second year that emergency shelters have been prepared with COVID-19 guidelines in mind. The health department uh, um, had a lot of say in terms of uh, how um, the shelter managers ought to address uh, um, the shelter is when they do come in. Um, we would have provided the shelter managers not only with their personal PPE, but in terms of uh, sanitation items for shelteries coming in. Also, we have discussed at length um, with each shelter manager and uh, through the inspection process, we would have highlighted an area for isolation. The 2021 Atlantic hurricane season is predicted to be active with the possibility of 20 storms being formed. Ten of the weather systems could become hurricanes. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. And taxi operators in Portland have withdrawn their service, threatening to continue their protest action for as long as it takes if the government does not provide some relief for them. They complain that it's becoming increasingly harder and expensive to remain viable in the public transport business. The gas price is high overall, and we now get no raise as taxi man. You understand? And no matter what go on over Jamaica and strike, nothing no go on in Portland. They now do nothing for it. Every gas go up, it go up on the pump. Every come down, it stay up on the pump. So we need some justice. We need a minister. We need somebody to talk to it. Yeah, we need somebody to give it something. Talk to it. Make, make we get some assurance for something. You say, it don't make no sense for your month. Forty dollar go pan gas, and one week when it when it drop, I buy two dollar. What sense he make? I mean, uh, there a uh, protest for getting no a fear increase, brother. Because if we forget a fear increase, it only fear for the people where I work get a raise up here too. What we want, Mr. Petrojam, Minister to do, and Mr. Petrojam, the Minister of Energy and Mining, we just need you to hold on your hand and alter the gas price at this time three months straight gas has been increased and nothing about it the people just have to fold in and take it we cannot tolerate it any longer and here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report in the next edition of the health report we look at skin irritation and acne as a result of mask wearing I've seen in a lot of women um, really worse because in adult females, a lot of adult females have what we call adult female acne, which is actually um, aggravated by hormones. Okay, so a lot of them have hormonal issues and they tend to actually come around this side of this part of the face. So imagine you already have acne that you're predisposed to along this jaw, jaw line and along the lower half of the face. And then now you're going to have this mask on top of it. So you actually have actually a serious aggravation of this acne. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's health living tip. Cleanse and moisturize your face daily. Skip the makeup when wearing a mask. Avoid trying new skin products that can irritate your skin. And use less of certain skincare products if your face becomes irritated. It's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. In the business world, Jamaica Producers has been listed as one of the top leading global banana chips manufacturers. They were profiled in the Banana Chip Market 2021 analysis by global manufacturers. The report offers a detailed market analysis to provide a 360-degree research study on the market. 
Grace Kennedy Limited has announced the retirement of director and chairman of the audit committee, Everton McDonald, effective May 26, 2021. This is in keeping with the company's policy for retirement of board members at age 72 years. Director of Grace Kennedy Limited since April 1, 2021, and retired partner of Price Waterhouse Coopers, Peter Williams, has been appointed chairman of the audit committee with immediate effect. MPC Caribbean Clean Energy Limited has recorded a net loss of 80,000 US dollars for the quarter ended March 31st. Despite the loss, the company reported a successful completion of the commissioning of San Isidro, a 6.5 megawatt solar park in El Salvador. Stationery and Office Supplies Limited is reporting major losses during April 2020. The closure of schools and hotels, work from home orders, as well as curfew measures resulted in an 80% decline in stationery and furniture sales. In total, their revenue declined by 20%. Their gross profit declined by 22%. Their stock also declined to $4.46, having started 2020 at $10.72. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. The Business Minute. Brought to you by. We head to a quick break now, but Simon Preston is standing by for sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. General Secretary of the Jamaica Football Federation, Dalton Wint, has assured that the Reggae Boys will play two friendlies on their tour of the Asian continent. Thursday's match against Japan's senior team was cancelled by mutual consent after nine European-based players were prevented from boarding their connecting flight in Amsterdam on Monday due to a blunder with the type of COVID-19 tests they had done. Despite Thursday's cancellation, Wint is confident the friendlies against Serbia and Japan's Olympic team will go on. Yes, the tour will continue. We will play Serbia on the 7th and against the Japan Olympic on the 24th team on the 12th. The Reggae Boys are using these friendlies in preparation for the 2021 CONCACAF Gold Cup and the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Jamaican football scout Jamal Jarrett has been signed by Premier League giants Manchester United from Crystal Palace to conduct recruitment in the south of England. More in this report. It's a privilege as well, you know, to be recognised as, you know, one of, you know, a lead sort of scout in the UK. That was Jamal Jarrett reacting to his appointment as Manchester United's head scout for the south of England. Jarrett will be in charge of the recruitment of players from the under-12 level up to the under-18 level in areas such as London, Bristol and Brighton. Jarrett also hopes to visit the island soon to analyse the talent in Jamaica. I know it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not as easy, um, you know, getting players into, into the UK in general. But still, just, just coming over and costing my eye, even giving advice to the powers that be over there and stuff like that. Yeah, no problem. Prior to joining Manchester United, Jarrett spent 10 years as an academy scout at Crystal Palace. And that is it for your midday sports report. I'm Simon Preston. Anthony, it is over to you. Thank you, Simon. And that's the Midday News. I'm Anthony Lugg. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.